Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you to attend my session. So the title is Building Edge AI Stack with AI as a Service in the Cloud Native Way. So uh, my name is Inding. I come from Future Way. Uh, very nice to meet you guys here. So uh, first, let's talk about the problem and challenges. Uh, why we need this edge cloud computing and edge AI? So uh, with the 5G and all the IoT booming, this edge cloud computing is uh, more and more urgent. So why we need it? Because uh, with IoT or remote site sensors, there's a lot of data generated in the remote site. So we want to uh, efficiently compute with this data. So uh, near data computation is a, a request. That's why we want to process data on the edge side instead of a transfer all data back to the data center. Also, there's a other three main problem. First, latency. You can see uh, even though the internet is faster, however, you cannot exceed the light of speed. And uh, if the data center in the other, another coast of your uh, place, the data generated, so it take maybe 100 or 200 milliseconds uh, to transfer the data. However, I have some user requests say, okay, can we do the processing within 20 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds? If the data center is cannot guarantee is very close, you cannot, I mean, conquer this problem. You have to uh, put some computation near to the data generated site. So that's why we need uh, edge cloud computing. Also, uh, because a large amount of data are generated. So the bandwidth is precious. You don't want to waste the old user bandwidth, upload the raw data there, because some data are redundancy, some data is not a cleanup. And we want to save some bandwidth for the other uh, user usages. We cannot do that all for the uh, transportation of this data. The third, not the last, but very important is data privacy. So uh, not all people want to upload data to the cloud for computation. Uh, not only for personal, they have a PII, also for the industry, all the factories, they may not want to upgrade, upload all this raw data to the data center because it could expose their uh, uh, business confidential information even uh, with data mining or other things. So they want to do the data cleanup. So then they can uh, take care, I mean, take advantage of uh, cloud computing, the large resource, uh, computation resource to compute this uh, data, this cleanup and already hide sensitive information. The third one, uh, the last one uh, is a new, is uh, AI offloading. For example, uh, we have uh, more and more powerful uh, devices, uh, especially mobile phones, mobile devices. However, the uh, mobile phone have only limited battery attached. So uh, this uh, AI inference, I mean, not mention the training, but the inference also could be a very uh, compute intense. That means your cell phone may not keep up with the algorithm also, more important, this computation takes a lot of energy. That means it drains your battery really fast. That's people don't like. They want their uh, mobile device to hold long, uh, hold for a long time. That's why we want to offload some of this AI inference to the edge. So we don't need to transfer all the way to the data center uh, to have a fast low latency response. However, it will save the energy and also uh, take advantage of more complicated models for the inference. So now we know why we need this uh, edge computing and edge AI. So the major, major challenge we need to solve is first, network reliability. So you know, um, it's not seem like within data center. So the edge node and cloud is connected through the internet. So the internet is not reliable and their latency is not consistent. It could be fast, could be, I mean, could be slow. 
and also the network bandwidth is limited. So as I said, the user only purchased a limited amount of uh, bandwidth. It's not guaranteed to be uh, wide enough. And also, uh, most of the time, edge devices have relative constraints, resource constraints in the edge node. That means it could be as small as a, uh, a small IoT gateway within uh, some some someone's home. Also, it could be a, a large server. However, compared to the cloud, it's still constrained. That means the hardware may be uh, outdated, or is a it's a previous or even older generation. They have a limited computation ability, and it's very important for the edge autonomy. That means, uh, as we said, the network is not reliable. When the network is disconnected or is temporarily down, we need the edge to run autonomously at the edge side without communicating with the cloud. They can run autonomously. The last one is a highly distributed and heterogeneous device management. So with the 5G and IoT, you can see old edge nodes and devices are geo-distributed all around the system and also they are heterogeneous so it's from different vendors uh, different operating systems different hardware architectures we need to uh, solve this problem that's the challenge we are facing uh, so uh, when we try to solve this problem we start with our uh, core open source project it's called Kube Edge so Kube Edge currently is a CNCF Cloud Native Foundation incubation project. So we graduated uh, in uh, this year, September. So this Kube Edge built upon Kubernetes. So it's take advantage of all the Kubernetes have for the application orchestration, deployment, lifecycle management, etc. And it provides fundamental, uh, fundamental infrastructure support for networking uh, or also, this app deployment, metadata synchronization between the cloud and edge. So the developer is only focusing on developer their business logic to solve their problem without worry about all these uh, issues the network, the, the platform can provide. So with this, the Kube Edge provide first seamless cloud edge communication. So this communication uh, include not only the data communication, but also metadata and edge autonomy. That means during temporary internet connection issues, so the edge can run autonomously without connect to the cloud. And also when the connection uh, restored and we're going to resynchronize the metadata to make sure the edge is running as we expected in the desired state. The third one is a low resource ready. That means, as we mentioned, the problem we're facing is sometimes the edge node have only constrained the resource. It's including probably low memory, low bandwidth, and the low compute uh, ability. So a uh, Kube Edge can vary to suitable for a high computation resource, even the low computing resource. So uh, we can, uh, the Kube Edge can uh, deploy to an edge node as low as a 128 megabytes memory. And we recommend it at least 256 meg megabytes. <coughs> and also we provide simplified device communication. That means we provide a device twin device shadowing. So from the cloud, you can easily manage the IoT devices without some extra works. Now here, let's go over the Kube Edge architecture. You can see on the top, on the, this is three part. We show the cloud edge and device collaboration. On the top part, that's cloud. You can see in the center is the Kubernetes. That means the Kubernetes uh, is the, we require Kubernetes deploy in order to deploy uh, Kube Edge. And 
with Kubernetes, we use the standard of Kuber control as the command line. So we inherit the most of the, we support most of the uh, Kuber control commands. And you can see uh, the core part is of the Kuber edge is called the cloud core. Does include edge controller, device controller, sync controller, and the cloud hub. That means uh, edge controller, of course, that means it's controlled edge nodes. So we have this uh, dot line, the edge node uh, draw there, but the actual edge node is on the bottom left. That's the drill down. The edge controller is handled uh, how we edge, manage the edge node to make it join the cluster and the delegate all the command from the cloud to the edge. Device controller is we use a CRD, device CRD to define the devices. So uh, with device controller, you can control or view the status of a device attached to the edge node. Sync controller is for the synchronization, especially when the, uh, you first join the cluster or uh, some network issue happen, the, the network connection is restored. So that means uh, with sync controller, it synchronized the data and uh, metadata between the cloud and the edge to make sure the edge node will run in the desired state. The last part is the cloud hub. Basically, uh, it's set up the connections between the cloud and edge. As we know, the edge probably, I mean, deployed in uh, behind some firewalls, either the Copnet firewall or even your home firewall. So that means is that if it's not set up a net, that means there's no public IP for your edge node. So it's impossible for your edge to build cloud to access the edge directly. And so we uh, set up this uh, web socket. So when the edge node joined the cluster, we set up this uh, web socket connections. That's duplex. That means we can send command from cloud to the edge. So the edge core part have an edge hub, I mean, compared to the cloud hub to for the connections. And also uh, the edge currently support a containerd Creole, Docker container, and we have uh, support some CSI entry CSIs for uh, attach storage to the uh, container running on the edge side. Also, you can see that some a mosquito there is the uh, pops up broker. So we, so we uh, have this uh, devices that we support a different IoT uh, protocols include MQD, uh, the model bus, Bluetooth, OPC, UA, that's popular industry, uh, industry IoT protocol. So uh, with this uh, MQDT, uh, IoT protocol, we uh, can let system control and manage the devices. Now I'm introducing uh, another open source project. So we, based on Kubernetes, Edge, we think it's very useful to demonstrate the AI abilities. That's why we, uh, in the LF Edge, a criminal community, we uh, set up this uh, Kubernetes Edge, Edge Service Blueprint project. So this project, is focusing on device edge cloud collaboration framework uh, built around the Kubernetes. So this blueprint, the verticals focusing could be IoT, could it be MEC, the Mac the scenario. So the key component of this project is the Kubernetes. As we said, this is a CNCF open source project. So the first type we're introducing into this project is focusing building an edge stack. The user case is ML inference offloading to the edge servers. That means if you have a mobile device, you want to do some inference, you want to offload that to the edge server. I'm going to give it a demo uh, in the following talk, uh, in the following slides. And then, so this print blueprint family is Kind, this is a kind of end-to-end -end open source project solution. So we'll leverage various uh, infrastructure. So that means they support x86, ARM, or a RISC, RISC-V. So 
So this blueprint is uh, infrastructure neutral. We want to uh, support all kinds of infrastructures, heterogeneous infrastructures. Here is the uh, offloading uh, function block diagram. So you can see uh, in the central part is the edge and the central column is the edge. And in the middle of the horizontal one is the Kube edge. So that means uh, in the cloud, we build a Kubernetes, we deploy Kubernetes. And in the edge, we deploy Kube edge. So the Kube edge have covered cloud, edge, and devices. So the first user case we are going to demonstrate is called emotion recognition. Basically, we are running the training service in the cloud. We train the new model. We deploy using the Kube Edge, deploy the model and application to the edge, then host this services to serve the devices. The device is only do the uh, image pre preparation or pre processing, then offload this inference to the edge. I'm going to demo this later. So this means uh, if our devices have a limited resource or want to save energy, so they can offload this uh, inference to the edge. And this is a typical offloading approach. Uh, we offload the inference to, from the device to the edge and the, all the training is happening in the cloud. So this collaboration framework is very essential to the ML offloading. So Kubernetes provide underlying software platform, including the application deployment, model deployment. This, uh, in the future, we are going to support a data set deployment update also. So here is the user case uh, for this uh, emotion recognition. We now the abstract uh, blocks diagram we see the we show some details is device edge cloud collaboration so the cloud we are running the training and provide the model resource and the edge will run the inference services and provide emotion recognition service and provide this uh, offloading apis so it will accept the application deploy the application provide a, a uh, inference model to do the inference. The device do the uh, image pre-processing include uh, resize, convert to uh, RGB, image to a pixel array also. And then it's offload, upload this uh, pixel array for, to the edge for inference. Then the edge will run inference algorithm, then reply the result to the device. Here, let me, uh, I have a about a four minutes demo. Let me show this to you to see how this uh, inference, ML offloading inference is running look like with uh, how the Kube Edge is working. So in this demo, you can see uh, we uh, deploy our cloud part to a AWS EC2 instance. The edge part is a physical server running behind a corporate firewall. And the devices we, uh, because uh, all this pandemic, we work at home, so we use a VPN connect to the server. But in the real life, the devices pro uh, should probably within uh, connect to the same subnet behind the same firewall of the edge server, so we don't need to have these uh, VPN issues. So in the uh, two terminal window, the top one is the cloud. The bottom one is the edge. First, uh, we can see we already installed, we pre-installed the Kubernetes in the uh, cloud. So there's only one node, it's the master node. It's, a, it's on the AWS public cloud. So now we are going to uh, let our 
edge node behind our component join this uh, Kubernetes cluster. The cluster master plane, control plane is running in the public cloud. So uh, in the cloud server, we only need to open one port. It's, it's configurable. It's now is default is uh, 10,000. So what we do in the edge node is say we use this uh, key admin tool is similar to Kubernetes admin to join our edge node to the uh, cloud server, the, the cloud cluster, the Kubernetes cluster running on the cloud. So you can see it's really fast. The, uh, it's already joined. Let's verify that the server is joining the uh, cluster, already joined the cluster. So you can see there's a two nodes right now. One is the master running in the cloud. Edge server is the one running behind our corporate firewall. Now in the edge node, you can see nothing is running. Then we are going to deploy our offloading services application from the cloud to the edge. So this is a TensorFlow, TensorFlow. We are using the TensorFlow uh, framework. So using so you can see we do this uh, deployment, Kubernetes control apply, and from the cloud you can see the uh, the pod is running on the edge on the edge node. You can see that's already successfully deployed. Let's come to the edge to verify. Yes, we can see the Docker container is running on the edge node. <clears throat> let's do uh, some, uh, yep, let's tell this log to show when what happened when we uh, have this inference request come in. Uh, on the left, we have a uh, Android emulator running to sh to demo what's happening. So first, we uh, open our photo book to upload. Yeah, you can see the service is quickly running. We uh, upload a uh, yeah. We pre-process a uh, portrait picture and we upload it and give answer back. Let's do another one. So this uh, even is a blur picture. We uh, convert to picture array, upload the service. Up a request for the service, then we have a uh, number come back. For this one, we got the result back too. So the emotion we recognize is angry with uh, confidence uh, 999, 0 0.99977. It's pretty confident that's a uh, angry face. So that's the based on our, the model we trained. So in this demo, I show I showed how we deploy, uh, set up a, uh, how we set up a cluster, a Kubernetes, Kubernetes plus Kubernetes cluster. So I assume the Kubernetes cluster already deployed. Then we uh, have the edge node join the Kubernetes cluster. Even the control plane is in the, running in the public cloud, the edge node is behind firewall, we don't have any issues. And with this WebSocket setup, we can, it's duplex, we can push command from the cloud to the edge node. Then we show, we deploy a uh, application based on uh, TensorFlow to do the emotion recognition. And then we use the emulator. Uh, so uh, to emulate a mobile device running in the same network with the edge server to do the AI offloading so that emulator, the, the app, the mobile app, is do the uh, pre-processing the image, convert to the pixel array, and send this uh, pixel array to the uh, inference service running in the edge server to get the result back. So that's the summary of a demo.
So let's come back to uh, our talk. So this demo is a relatively simple. It only show the inference, the inference of loading. So how about a more complicated cases? So uh, we have more challenges. So first, all this uh, edge is geo-distributed and they have a data set geo-distributed. Can we take advantage, I mean, to conquer these issues? And also these samples are not universally distributed. Some nodes have more data, some nodes have less data. And uh, so, and also because of this uh, non-universal distributed data, so the performance of a uni universal AI model is uh, degraded on the edge. And also the resource is constrained on the edge. And when you try to run some um, federated learning issues, and it's hard, I mean, we have few short samples, it's hard to converge. So we are thinking, so uh, with, we are going to build a uh, edge AI framework based on Kube Edge to see if we can uh, help to solve this problem. Here is our uh, design. The purpose is a, uh, we want to have a uh, edge cloud collaborated machine learning framework based on Kube Edge. With this uh, embedded uh, collaborative training joint inference algorithm, it helped the developer to develop uh, new algorithms. So we are trying to work with existing AI frameworks, for example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, we are not inventing a new uh, AI framework. So uh, it's have built in three features, joint inference, increment learning, collaborated, uh, collaborative training, is federated learning. So our target user is a domain specific AI developers. So they are building and publish edge cloud collab collaborated AI service function. They can do that easily. And also we are targeting the application developers so they can use the edge cloud cl collaborative AI capabilities. So without uh, any uh, learning curves. So the central part you can see is a, based on the Kube Edge, we build an Edge Cloud collaborative machine learning framework. So it support heterogeneous hardware, either S86, ARM servers, and also based on this framework, you can easily build a computing vision, speech, uh, NLP applications. So architecture, you can see uh, we divide it to uh, cloud and edge. On the cloud part, we are running a Kubernetes platform. So they have a worker application running and this support TensorFlow, PyTorch. We have our SDK libraries there and then you can train the model in the cloud. And we have this uh, called uh, GC, it's a global coordinator to coordinate all these uh, services. On the edge, we run uh, Kube Edge. So uh, this also have the worker, I mean, communicated with the workers running on the cloud. So it's probably uh, instead of run uh, training, it could run inferencing and also uh, when you do the uh, increment training or collaborative training, you do you run training in the edge too. So uh, based on the Kube Edge, you can deploy a local resource management for the job monitoring management and the peer management also. So uh, that's our architecture. And let's elaborate all three features. First is collaborated joint inference. In this case, you can see uh, we have a, uh, as we demoed in the ML offloading in the previous demo, you can see we run the inference in the edge. However, the edge could only have uh, restrained resources. It cannot run more very complicated model. In this case, 
uh, we do this uh, collaborative joint inference. That means in the edge, especially in the in the low resource edge node, we run a, a shallow model. That means it's probably handle 70, 80 percent of the scenarios. If so we get a very uh, confident result back. Uh, however, if you are, if the result come back if only a 40, 50 percent of confidence, so we cannot tell the result back to the user. So we uh, offload this another one to uh, another layer to the cloud. So in the cloud, we run a more deeper uh, deep model does uh, require more uh, computation resources. So that one is <coughs> should calculate or uh, inference have a better result back and send this result back to the edge, edge pass through to the user. So all these models is trained by the AI developers. So when you do the training, you train, AI, you generate a, a deeper model and a shallow model. The deep model is require more computation resource. It's uh, suitable for running in the cloud. And the shallow model is require only uh, a part of this uh, result. So it's suitable to run on the edge, especially in the low resource edge. Incrementing uh, learning. So in this case, so the AI de app developers uh, use this uh, AI library so uh, to integrate the collaborative increment learning function. So uh, when the, the sample detect algorithm in the edge, identify a sample with a low inference confidence. So in this case, similar to the uh, collab collaborative inference, we uh, upload this one to the cloud for the laboring services. So in the cloud is running a uh, label services it manually or periodically uh, with, uh, I mean, AI assist, we uh, label the samples. So the system automatically perform an increment training. It's based on the current model. You train and generate a new better model. Then you push this model back to the edge. So the edge have a better model. So if you get another hard example or difficult example, you cannot achieve a high confidence level, you upload to the cloud to further labeling, uh, labeling and to generate an even better model. So that's called increment training. That means uh, you don't have the data set at whole, all data set at the very beginning. It's the, you increment training the, your model better and better. Federated learning. So, <clears throat> So this one is especially for the data privacy issues. So the raw data is never transmitted out of the edge. So it's only stay locally. So the model is generated by the knowledge aggregation. So that means in the edge node, we have our local, I mean, data set. So that's very uh, data, probably a sensitive data. So you never transfer to the uh, cloud. You do your training locally at the edge node. Then after you trained, you upload this model to the cloud. Then the cloud will do a cross edge transforming and model aggregation. So that's our library we provide. So do the aggregation algorithm and then on the cloud. After that, you uh, send back your result back to the uh, edge to re refresh to get a more better model back to uh, the edge. So with this, first you save your time, transfer your time and the bandwidth, transfer the raw data back to the cloud. Also, it's very important for data privacy. You never transfer your data out of your edge. You have a confidence, you have full control of your data. Now let's show is how easy is that. So we are not, as we mentioned, we, we are not targeting to invent a, a, a new AI framework. So we are uh, compatible with current 
AI framework, for example, TensorFlow, the current example is our, we use the joint inference uh, based on TensorFlow. So you can see the, the most of the functions or uh, most of the writing is uh, similar to, very similar to the uh, AI developer use for TensorFlow for uh, inferencing. The only difference is uh, we have our, include our library and <clears throat> have this uh, transfer to cloud algorithm. So in case your uh, confidence level, the uh, confidence level does not match the goal, this automatic transfer to cloud for the second layer is uh, drawing the inference. So the developer do not need to change other part of the code, only need to uh, using our SDK to configure and generate this uh, Edge Cloud the joint inference. Federated learning, you, the similar thing. You can see we are compatible with all the style, everything. You, most of the code you can use the same. Uh, you don't need to change uh, existing code. So, and also you don't need to learn a new framework. You, uh, if you are familiar with TensorFlow, use TensorFlow. If you are familiar with PyTorch, use PyTorch. So there's a no learning curve. So uh, to use this, the library, you only need to uh, import our library and then uh, use the training loss function optimizer and a collaborative train function from the library, then you can achieve uh, federated learning very easily. So uh, let me conclude my uh, presentation. So in this, in this talk, I talk about mainly uh, talk about how we build the Edge AI framework. So this framework is based on the Coop Edge so first, the Coop Edge is a CNCF incubation project. So here I list the project website and also the code repository is public to GitHub. The Slack channel, a mailing list, and all the meeting, community meeting are recorded, uploaded to the YouTube. You can uh, uh, Take a look if you miss any meetings, you are in you are interested in any meetings. Um, and the meeting notes is hosted in the Google Doc. It's public to everybody. So here is the link to the meeting calendars. So it's host in uh, in the night. There's a uh, every week one uh, one week is uh, suitable for the United States people, North American people attend. The other is more friendly to the uh, European uh, people. Europe people, so you can see the meeting calendar with some link, and here is the the Zoom meeting ID. Another uh, project I mentioned is the uh, LF Edge Acrino Coop Edge Service Blueprint. So instead of a uh, project website, is the uh, public Acrino wiki site. It have a uh, everything, including the document and also the AI frame, Edge AI framework. I mentioned all this uh, diagram and all the service samples is hosted in this uh, wiki page, so you can go there and take a look at the document. And also, we have a weekly meeting, so it happened in the uh, nineteen hundred uh, Pacific Standard Time. Here is the Zoom link. And also there's a Slack channel. So if you have anything, you can chime in and jump to the Slack channel to ask questions. So both are Linux Foundation. Uh, one is the CNCF and both are Linux Foundation uh, open source project. So uh, both are welcome to everyone to join and chime in. So uh, uh, thank you. Uh, this concludes my talk. I leave about uh, about eight minutes for the questions. Thank you.